Hello and welcome. I'm Christine Lee with Seize the Market. Welcome to our show today. And today we have a very special guest, Mr. Nick Shivers out of Portland. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, I am honored to be here, Christine Lee. Um, you're always a vat of information. and I always love our conversation. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. So Nick is like a beast. Oh, can you um, do something about the audio? There's uh, feedback. Por favor. Okay. I better? I think so. All right. So um, Nick, you are a complete beast out there in Portland. So tell me about your business and don't be shy. This is definitely like a put your modesty in your pocket moment. Don't make sure. me brag on you now. Sure. Okay. So, um, you know, we run, we have about eight agents. We have about four admin. Um, and over the last three years, we've averaged uh, about 110 million. Um, 2016 was our best year. We were at like 146, 146 million. Last year, we were uh, about 100. So we were down significantly. A lot of that had to do with uh, our market is just so tight. Our buyer side stayed the same, but our listing side last year was about about half just because our inventory levels are so, so low. So, um, but overall great, uh, great business, um, great movement. Uh, you know, my, my, my passion is sell a home, save a child. That's our biggest thing that we, uh, we do here at the West one team. So it's serving people, saving kids by selling real estate, Christine, you know, that's what we're all about. You know, and that's so true because you have a passion for helping orphans in Nicaragua and you literally spend a ton of your time, effort, money, energy, like all of the above, because that's just one of your your soft spots. That's one of your passion projects. And so you have found a way to weave that into your business. So I just want to share with everybody out there that you're such a giving, you know, big hearted person. And that's why it's so great to know people like you, because it's just you come from contribution and you're making a difference. So I want to be able to go into a little bit more of that. But you have some great lessons to share with us today, because, Nick, you are like the the quintessential entrepreneurial agent. Let's like go, go, go. And like through pure entrepreneurial spirit and power, like busting through things yes. <laughs> for better, or for worse. Right. Yes. And um, you have some great lessons to share with those who are growing their business and stepping from production, you know, being a top agent or producing agent into leadership where you can do get things done without doing it yourself and how to get out of the grind. And you've learned some awesome lessons you're going to share with us today. And we're going to highlight top three things, the top three Nick Shiver special for today on how to get out of the grind, lessons learned from the pure sheer will and a little bit of bloodshed. So you're yes. going to save you a lot of time, effort and energy today. So what is top on the list? Let's jump right into it. Number yeah. one. I'm going to tell you, yeah, I am the, the best guy to learn from because I did everything wrong. So yeah, it's, uh, I've done it all wrong. So you, you know, whatever you think out there that you've done wrong, I've done it already, like probably four times over. Um, so, but the first thing is you don't need to be great at everything. You just, you, you don't need to be great at everything. And what I mean by that is this, I think a lot of people wait and they're waiting. They want everything to be per perfect. I never waited for anything and I was terrible at everything. I, couldn't, I mean, I, I just knew how to grind. Um, but the, and the fact is to build a team you know, I, I basically built my team because I was terrible at most everything. I was good at a couple things. So you don't need to be a great business leader. You don't need to be a great leader at this point in time. You don't need to uh, know from A to Z. And because guess what? In, in today's world, you can find out pretty much anything you need to know with a little bit of effort and persistence of, of and, and especially with coaching programs like yourself, Christine. I mean, I wish I've known you for a long time, but because I'm kind of stupid, um, I don't reach out as much as I possibly shouldn't and ask questions. I don't know if it's ego, if it's, I, I just don't think people would want to share. But the fact that I realized over my old age is 
surround at you don't need to know everything there's people like christine and that will give you those answers that you're not that might not be your strength all right so let's give some ex examples of when you say you don't have to be good at everything what are some of the things that before you're like oh i gotta figure this out or um you see other agents really trying to be good at something that they shouldn't have to worry about and you know being able to back that up and go on the right path sure Sure. First of all, I think it can be anything in your business. Um, you can, I know some guys that are really good at the analytical side, but they couldn't sell anything to anybody. Um, so what do they do? They were smart enough to go out and hire those people that were good at what they weren't good at. And, and I believe that could it be anything in your business? That's like with your millionaire system. It could be, hey, I, my personality is not to be a salesperson. Because I am, I am a salesperson, but my personality isn't to be the guy that's going to go over all the data. Um, and we'll talk a little bit, but you do have to inspect the things that you're not good at. So you can, you can hire out lead gen. There are a ton of people that you can pay on an hourly basis to do your lead generation, to do your cold calls, to do all that if you're not good at it. For me, Christine, I was terrible at paperwork. I hated it. I'm not detailed. Um, so it, it took me four times as long as someone that was good at that. So I try to do it by myself. I've been in the business 17 years for the first three years. I, I did everything myself. I worked 80 hours a week. I did everything and I just grinded my way through it. Cause that's what I was raised to do. You just grind things out. And that, and that is just not the way to do it. You get mentors, you ask questions, you find someone that has a skill set that isn't yours, and you bring them alongside your little powerhouse group. And you bring out a really good point is that you know your strength and you know your weakness, right? You're like, I am now, I know you kind of are a little modest about, oh, you're not that great at sales. Nick, you're lovable as can be, right? You're like this connecting machine. Once you hang out with Nick, you can't like not love him, right? Because he's got such a big heart and just everybody knows it. So that's your strength. Details. Yes. I would not have you plan an event or a vacation to save my life, okay? You and me both, right? We'd be like packed with like maybe like a piece of paper, no luggage in the wrong location. It's like not cool. Right. And so um, you found somebody to do that. And mm -hmm. let's, let's go through that, right? So now you, it's interesting because you represent a lot of agents out there because they're great at connecting with people. That's why they became agents, right? They didn't become yeah. agents because they're like, oh, I'm a hermit. Let's go be an agent. Like, no, I love people. Real estate seems really cool. And then they learn that they really love real estate. Also, they find out, whoa, when you come into the business, there's all sorts of stuff that HGTV did not tell you about. <laughs> and so surprise, you have all yeah. this and a lot of detailed work, right? Ooh. Yeah. You know, I think that's the biggest thing in this industry is, you know, I think we have great coaches on lead generations and scripts and dialogue. And, and, and the great thing is um, you need to learn that. But I call it the real estate roller coaster because us sales guys, we're out there hammering. We get deals, but oh my gosh, no one taught us how to make sure we prioritize how to do our paperwork or to look at our balance sheet. And I'm like, oh man, you know what? I did two to one return on investment. So if I spend, if I spend another double, but I didn't realize that my ability to handle all that didn't work. So you must bring alongside someone. If you're not going to do it, you bring them alongside as well as you continually reach out to others that have done something better than you. OK, and ask their advice, whether it be you're reading a book about it uh, or you're watching a YouTube video or a podcast. Biggest mistake of my life is I never reached out and found mentors. I the only thing that I had, I did read books. I was really good at that. I read a lot, a lot of books and it made me um, be able to go. Uh, I have no clue what my numbers are to knowing, okay, here's my baseline. I got someone that handles that to the T, but my baseline, I need to know, okay, where's our cash flow? Because again, us agents, it's always more production. It's the ego thing. Oh, I did $450 million in, in sales, but I only made 50 grand. 
when I used to do 30 grand, 30 million, and I made, you know, a million bucks. No. And it's, those are some of the keys that you have to make sure. And, and, and I think that's the, the, the thing that I'd love to see at all our real estate conferences is get rid of the ego commission and let's get, let's go to, back down to net profit. Um, yeah. I mean, and, and we aren't taught to, to do that in this industry until like you with your millionaire systems, that it's not just sales, it's business, it's leadership, it's organization systems. And you combine that to really grow a huge, huge, incredible business that feeds your life and not the other way around. Absolutely. And so Nick, um, again, you're like the, the representative of so many agents. You don't like details. You're connecting and selling like mad. Your first assistant, getting your first help, right? Your first point of leverage. Cause you're like in the grind working 80, 90 hours a week. Yep. What was that like for you? And what would be some lessons that you share with others out there? Well, again, I did it all wrong because I didn't have any system uh, on hiring or anything. I did it out of necessity because mm -hmm. I was like, I was angry and I'm not an angry guy, but I, man, when I'm do, doing paperwork, I'm angry. <laughs> so my first hire was out of necessity. I, I, I think I talked to five people. Hey, do you know anybody that knows how to do paperwork? And they're like, yeah, there's this person. And I'm like, great, let me hire her. And I, and, and, and the reality, it, it didn't work out too bad, um, but it could have been a, done a lot smoother, a lot less headaches, a lot less time, and a lot less money. So mm -hmm. when, you, when you make decisions without a plan, without a system, you lose time, you lose current income, and you lose, it, you lose future income because you're not doing it in an organized, systemized way. Okay, so give me some specific examples of what are some of those losses? Like, what does it look like in real life? Well, when you when you continually are turning over your admin and they never get good at anything, and then you're always having to spend time training and doing that instead of instead of doing it once, mm -hmm. doing it one time with someone that is really good. And 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 I think Christine, it starts with you know you've told me many times, Nick. Here is the profiles. Here's your system for profiles on how to do it. So when you implement those things, number one, you start with a better system on hiring right there. Done. Okay. Does it always work out? No, probably 50% of the time it won't, but guess what? Better than one in 10, because again, what you're doing with one in 10, what is your time worth? You know, I always like to say my, I'm worth a thousand bucks an hour. Okay. Well, guess what? If you spend four hours training someone, you've just lost four grand. And if they're gone in six months, what, what does that look like? And then you start that process over. So um, how much time would you say you spent on like a new hire to train them? What time? Well, luckily, I do, yeah, now I, I have people that do all that for me because I learned from your systems and, and your mentoring on how to do those things. But, you know, I would say if I put it all together, I bet I lost a million bucks because of it. One one million dollars. <laughs> Thank you, Austin Powers. And uh, <laughs> I kind of look like it too, didn't? I? Except better looking. Yeah, thank you. All right, cool. Um, so, but as a single agent, when you brought on that first hire, how much time were you carving out of your day? Like in in a thirty day period, how much did you pour into that admin? Um, not as much as I should. Uh, mm -hmm. The fact is, uh, I just you know was like, hey. I need someone to help with this paperwork and can you do it? And I just let them, there was no inspecting anything. Mm -hmm. I just, and that, that's why it continued. Then I would get mad because again, I didn't set the expectations of what needed to happen. Why? Because I was too busy out there grinding. Mm -hmm. That was love. So mm -hmm. guess what? When you do that, it is. I mean, it wasn't their fault. It was completely my fault. Because I didn't set the expectations. I didn't have a, uh, a employee plan. This is how you get to here, 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 and here. I just, I wanted someone, hey, you look like a warm body. I don't have to do it. But the reality, I, I kept going back and doing it. So not only was I still doing everything, I was paying on top of that. Okay, so that's like a double, triple doozy there. So you did that about half a dozen times. And yep. so- Again, that's all, what a lot of people do. And it's so cool hearing it from you because 
you know, they get to see like, hey, dude, he's like me, you know, like I don't like detail work and he's like crazy as I am. And mm -hmm. dude, he's speaking my language, you know. Um, yep. And so your advice to them in a nutshell for this first part, don't be good at everything. And then when you find somebody, have a system for doing it. Right. What are what would be some golden nuggets for this first point for your for the audience out there? Number one, whether it, it's a find a systems coach that's done it before. OK, someone that knows the business that have, that's that's better than you in that area. You either reach out to them, you read about them, you listen to their podcast, you sign up for their coaching like yourself, and you follow that system. You build your foundation there and you don't deviate from that until you've already mastered that. And then you put your personality. Don't recreate the wheel. I love it how people are always like, oh, you can't tell people any of that. Here's the facts. No one is it has the secret nugget. It's just a little bit of hard work. And Slowing down to build a foundation and to build business is the key with that. It starts right there. Slow down, find a system that's going to work with your organization and stick to it. Don't keep doing the same thing over and over. If you want to train an admin, you videotape it. You First, you learn the system from a person like you. Then you videotape it. And then guess what? Then you have it forever. And then you just keep doing it over and over and over and over. And you keep refining it and refining it and refining it. And you keep reaching out to people that are doing it bigger and better. If you're if you're at 100 deals and you you want to get to 200 deals, well, you better not be talking to the person that's doing 50 deals. You better be talking to the person that's doing 200, 300 deals. And you keep doing that and you keep asking the questions. Get rid of the ego. Get rid of everything. I'm, I'm so great. At, I'm the smartest person in the room. No, you're not. You're not the smartest person in the room. I am. <laughs> Thanks for that, Nick. So let me ask you this. Ooh, we got some volume feedback. Can you do something? Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Okay. So you brought up inspect what you expect. Yes. And I know we all have learned that lesson. Share yes. with the audience what that looks like in your world. So yes. a couple of examples, live ones, the good, good hey. juicy ones. Yes. So, so we have, I, the, the term is KPIs. What are some key performance indicators in your industry? Okay. So now I'm not in production. Um, so as the leader, even though I'm not the detail guy, okay. I set the expectations for our, let's say it's our ISAs. I have expectations for our listing agents. Okay. So if my expectation for my listing agents is that if, when they go out on appointments, if they convert 70% of the time, I better make sure that I'm inspecting what they're doing. So for us specifically, I, I look at a monthly record of every listing appointment paperwork that was drafted up. Okay. And then I look at their conversion levels. Did they, if they got the listing paperwork drafted up, did they go on the listing appointment? And then what happened? So if, if I say it's 70%, and here's a, here's a perfect example. And, uh, and my top listing agent, he'll, he'll, he'll be fine with this. I looked at his numbers for the last 90 days. Cause, cause he's been my number one guy forever. And I didn't look at his monthly conversions and I looked at it and it was shockingly bad. And, and me and him, we, we talked about this and guess what? When me and him had a conversation and that's my, on me, because sometimes you pour into people um, that are causing the problems instead of the people that are doing a good job, which is a big mistake. I learned that about a year ago. So I'm trying to pour into my, my best. That's where I want, should spend my time. But the fact is from that conversation, he went from a 50% conversion, and then in the last six weeks, he's at like 95%. Just a little bit of tweak, a little bit of conversation. Hey, what, do, what should we do? And one of the things that we realized is that he was getting beat by a lot of Redfin agents. So we put together a, 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 make sure a little chart that talks about our flexible commissions. And it was as little as that. But because I hadn't inspected that, I didn't really know there was a problem. But you... I inspected it from my expectations and we made the tweak together and guess what? Things shot up the roof. So inspect what you expect. 
Absolutely. That's an awesome, awesome example. And it goes for both agents and admin, right? Mm -hmm. And um, no matter what you're doing, and it's so easy because I think the temptation is that we're so eager to get it off our plate. Like the idea of not having to do it ourselves is like so charming. It's like, oh, when can I do that? We literally just like toss it out there and be like, freedom. (laughs) And then we think we don't have to look at it again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of discipline goes a long ways. And Christine, I'm not a disciplined person, but I'm disciplined in a few areas of my life that make me pretty successful in in different avenues with my family, which is the most important aspect for me. Um, And and again, I am I am not disciplined person. I don't like I've always been the guy. I'm just this. I'm, I'm good at shooting off the cuff. Um, but again, if, if, if you just, and, and it's not success, if I add this much discipline, I get this much success. So the re- reality is when you up your, just a little bit, because a, someone that's good and someone that's great is about this much. It's the little things that can take you. I always remember for probably the first 10 years of my business, I'm like, man, I'm like that all-star basketball player that just, just, uh, isn't it making it to the all-star game, but has the talent. And then I realized, you know why? Because you're not being systemized and disciplined because you think that that's boring. Well, guess what? When you do a little bit of the boring things, you you take your business to that next level that even a guy like myself, barely graduated high school, dropped out of three colleges, probably, you know, was, I was voted as uh, most likely to be in prison. Um, so, uh, uh, you can do it. If I can do it, anybody out there that's listening right now can do it. And so inspect what you expect. What would be a key tip from this, that recommendation? Again, just you find out what are the key, like with our admin, our admin, how we inspect. Number one is we get feedback on a monthly basis from our agents, how they're doing. And we also get feedback from our clients through uh, a little survey that we do. We go, on the, on a scale of one to 10, how, how did our administrative people and we have their names meet, meet your needs? We're looking for tens and nines. And then we go from admin to listings. Um, and, and that, that right there, what, you, what my agents are saying and what the clients are saying that will give me, will give me a, a, an idea if, are they doing what they're supposed to be doing? Cause our, our mission statement serve people. So are we serving them? And that that little survey will tell me, hey, we should be nines and tens 90% of the time. And when I get, like I had one the other day, the person said, I don't want to put, um, I don't want to give a rating. And I'm like, red flag. So I got on the horn and they just said they didn't like, they didn't like to do that kind of stuff because they didn't like to give out a lot of personal information. I had no clue what that meant. But the fact is, I said, so is there anything that we could have done better? And, and and basically what they said was, hey, at the very end, before the closing, we would have had, liked to have a little bit more conversation. Well, you know what? The ground truth, you got to look at things. I, I think a lot of people, when they get a bad review or something, oh, that people are stupid and they blame it, the, the people. Well, guess what? As the leader of the business, you better find out what's going on. And not, and not blame and, and you know sometimes we we decide to work with non core clients, but majority of the time I found that there was just a, something on our end that we could have done better. And if you don't ask the questions and you don't get that information, how do you get, how do you get better? You can't. Yep. And I love that you didn't just write it off as oh you know he said he didn't want personal information. Okay, psh, next right. You're like no, there's more. And there's more. So you dug. Tell me more. Deeper. Tell me more. And so fantastic. And then now you're actually, you listened. And instead of getting defensive, you are applying it to your business and say, okay, then that's an area I can notch it up a little bit. And now the experience for all your clients, all, you know, whatever, four or 500 that you're going to work with every year are going to now get a better experience because of that one review where they're being all stingy and like, I don't want to give out personal information. They actually just lifted your business. Right. And, and Christine, I think in this new real estate world, I, I think there's so much pressure from, um, you know, and no offense to our, our Redfin agents that are listening, 
but uh, uh, a pressure on from Redfin and Zillow's and iBuyers and stuff like that. And I, I believe if, if the customer experience is not A plus and you don't build a really incredible tribe, I believe that a lot of agents are going to be in trouble. I do because I think things are changing rapidly. Yeah. Um, I do not believe you're going to have cyborg real estate agents. Um, I believe that you'll have really, really good agents that continue to survive and the agents that don't have systems that are just flying by the seat of their pants, which I was, um, I, I think the, they're going to get swallowed up in that industry because the industry is changing rapidly. More than, like I said, I'm an old grizzled vet and I've never changed as fast as it is. <laughs> I love it. Old grizzled. I'm like, I can almost taste the crispiness. Um, <laughs> all right. So the third point for you is what's the third lesson that you want to share with our audience? It's all about leadership. Um, if you think you're a leader and no one's following you, then I think you're in trouble. Um, I am a, um, and I've learned leadership. I, I don't think you have to be great out of the gate, but you got to always be striving to get better. One thing that I've realized, the most important leaders are the people that really care about their people. They care about the, their people. Um, and they lead, not just, I mean, if I was just out here sprouting, I'm the best, I'm the best ad man. I'm, I've always been, I've always been organized. I, I, I tell it all. I, I mean, I believe everybody has a story and I tell my story. I say, you know, I suck at most everything. OK, and I've struggled. I've been there. I know you don't want to put uh, all your notes and seize the market. But here is the reason why. Um, and then and then once they know that they they trust you, they're, they're like best business book as far as team is the five dysfunctions of the team that I've read. And it all comes. You know, we're talking about a foundation for your business. I think you have a foundation for your leadership and that that's trust. And whether it is, you know, the person's going to be in your world, your business world for a year, because there's, as you know, there's a lot of turnover on teams and stuff like that. Two years, three years, four years. OK, if there's trust, people understand that you're going to be all right with that. Your, your ego might when people leave me, I'm just I can't believe it. So that's that's my initial. I can't believe they leave me. I can't believe it. But the fact is. Uh, my job is if when they come into an organization, when they leave, if they're better, then guess what? I did my job. And as a leader, let go of that ego. Let go of that ego and realize, hey, you just contributed to someone. I mean, like I said, I just lost my one of my top agents, been with me for three years. He came into the business making 60 grand a year. He left making $250,000 a year. And whether I agree with him or not for him leaving, I did my job. And I'm going to let down my ego and I'm going to I'm going to wish him the best. As long as people do it the right way, as long as they do it the right way, you should high five them, send them out the door and wish them nothing but the best. Because like Zig Ziglar said, the more people you help, the more people are that are going to help you. And, and I was that I'm not 100 percent sure if he said that, um, but I think it was Zig Ziglar. Yes, yes. Um, I think you caught the spirit of what he was he was saying. And so, yeah. And you know, I want to point out that leadership. You mentioned a couple nuggets that I want to highlight. Is that most agents that come into a business and then start growing it and even have um, their first hire, which now puts you into the category of guess what? You're a team. You're more than just yourself. Okay. So you're ding default leader. OK, mm -hmm. so you can choose to be uh, eh, OK one or you can be the best that you can make yourself be because you can learn leadership skills, leadership traits. And like you said, Nick, you didn't come from a lineage of like leaders. Um, you came from, hey, a pretty typical all-American type of background. Mm -hmm. and so you're just kind of crawling your way up. Nobody yep. taught you this stuff. You have to learn it. Yep. You have to learn. it. And, and again, the biggest nugget is. A leader is someone that is willing to be in the room with a, and be the dumbest guy in that room. OK, just because you don't the leader doesn't know have to know everything. They really don't. And people respect that. Um, you can be the dumbest guy in the room. And I try to do that. And it's, you know, Christine, it's pretty easy for me to be the dumbest guy. Fact is, you know, I'm all right with that now. When I was younger, I probably wasn't. Maybe that's why I didn't reach out to find mentors. I always wanted to be the best. 
Well, the fact is I, I wasn't. And because I w- wasn't willing to do that, it set me back. I, you know, but you, you know what? That's why you learn from guys like me. You just let them do all the mistakes and then you figure out, Oh, don't do that. <laughs> so uh, like one of the, here's another thing that I, uh, I would caution. I think we, we, there's a lot of buzz seventh level. You got to get out of production. You got it. You know what? The fact is that's not true. You don't have to get out of production. You can have, maybe you stay in production and you have somebody else do the, the, the key management roles and stuff like that. Because Hey, listing a listing agent, that is a, if you have an admin taking care of you and you like it, why do you have to get out of production? You don't have to do anything. Don't just listen to the masses. Oh, if you're not seventh level, you don't have a, a business. Well, I know some guys that used to make a ton of money and they were listing agents with an admin team. And then they went and got a great big team and they don't make near as much, but they sure get the awards because woo, they quadrupled the, their production, but they don't make any more money. And I've been, there. I've done that. There's many times I'm like, crap, we, we sold 200 more homes and I made almost exactly the same, but I have a lot less hair and I, I have a lot, I mean, a, full, a few bad months when you keep building and building and building and you're not looking at that profit margin coming up. I mean, that is not being a leader. That's not being a leader. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the biggest takeaway you just mentioned is that, you know, if you don't learn that stuff, you're just going to lose all your hair. I mean, geez, that just hit home <laughs> with me big time. <coughs> no hair so, all right. <laughs> I didn't start it this time. That's true. Um, all right. So. Yeah, leadership. You can learn leadership. And what leadership is, is about how to have the right conversations and relationships with your team members. And, you know, there's different styles of leadership. And I think the one that, Nick, you and I both subscribe to is what you would call servant leadership, right? You're here to serve your team members and help them grow and help your clients. Not a top town because I said so macho, macho, you know, boom, 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 iron fist type of thing. Right. And so those those are two very distinct different styles. And what we're advocating is care about your team members, care about your clients, and then lead with just having everybody's best interest at heart. Yeah. And even when you have, you know, a top producer leaving you and you create space for them to do it in an honorable way where you respond honorably and that you can part as friends and then you'll have other introductions and other new people in your life that, you know, kind of blossom your business to the next level. It's, you don't know what's going to happen next and always being in, um, you know, raising your level of leadership, being in an integrity so that you can be a, a shining example for your teammates, yourself, mm-hmm. other people in your industry. And, um, you know, you always come out shining. So leadership can be learned and a lot of it is learned. I don't think people have this. Oh, I woke, I rolled out of bed and all of a sudden I know how to be a leader. No. Hey, we're messing no. that up all the time. Yeah. Yeah, there's, you know, there's some people that have some natural charisma, like yourself, Christine, that people are just, <laughs> um, and then there's some cyborgs like myself that have to work on it a little bit more. But, you know, um, yeah, you, you just, as a leader, again, number one, it, you can also let down that ego to admit when you screw up. I, I traditionally, every year, have one big screw up that I do, and, and it, it kind of goes. You know, it could be maybe maybe it goes nine months, but every year traditionally, I do one big boohoo screw up. So um, it's all right. You know, guess what? If if you learn from it, the the key is making sure you learn from it. And leaders learn, and they're constantly learning. Leaders are disciplined. Leaders do hold people accountable. Being a being a motivational leader, I feel that that's kind of my forte. I'm not a a micromanager, but the fact is. For the longest time, I wasn't the person that inspected what I expected. And that's not a leader either, because that's abdicating. And guess what? That will always bite you in the butt because you're not the leader then if you're abdicating. Yep. So there's a lot of balance in everything that needs to be done. And the thing is, is that I think the key takeaway from all of this is that you know, you don't have to keep making it up, right? There's best practices in place. Mm. And we're like, you know, you and I both are like, dude, there's like, like systems and rules that you can follow that show you, hey, this is the best practice for leadership conversations or how to delegate, not abdicate, right? And to inspect what you inspect. 
expect. And then how to be a, a servant leader that helps you have the right conversations and hold people accountable in a joyous sort of way. You know, sure, there's sure. ways to do that and skills that can be learned. So for yeah. those of you who are listening, if you want to grow up and be like Nick and be cool like him out there in Portland and, and not lose all your hair, then <laughs> I want to invite you guys. Let's have an honest conversation. Um, you know, if you want to go to seize the market.com slash talk, what we offer is to have a honest conversation on where your business is at now and where you want to be and how to bridge that gap and to get clarity on those points is amazingly refreshing and liberating and also going to help you get to the next level. So again, go to seize the market.com slash talk and Nick, you are a joy as always. And buddy, it's always a hoot talking to you and you are one of the most lovable and giving people that are out there. And I want to ask you if the audience can help you in any way today, what would that be? If the audience can help me in any way is, is my movement that I started called sell a home, save a child. They could go to sell a home, save a child.org, um, become a member, get, be involved in the movement, uh, helping underprivileged kids around the world. And then also helping, helping your, your business have a big, big why. Um, so go to sell a home, save a child.org. You can reach out to me at Nick at West one pro.com. Um, I can answer any of your questions, but that's how they can help me. Awesome. And what I want to um, say a couple comments on that is that, you know, um, sell a home, save a child. What Nick does is helps you incorporate the element of charity into your business in a very purposeful way and kind of help your business lead with your heart and, and put that message out there. And not only that, Nick has really made a lot of put a lot of things in place where he actually donates a whole lot. How much have you donated to that from your business and incorporate that? Last year, our goal was to raise uh, a million bucks. So mm -hmm. shoot for the moon, hit the stars. We we were a little bit under eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars raised oh. last year, and that's that eight hundred fifty. That's not just me. That's I mean, there's a lot of different uh, teams that uh, joy, but we we at our West One team, that's our forefront. Um, so we've uh, the, and here's the cool thing, Christine. Um, the first girl out of the dump, one of the first girls that we were able to out that you know the story the back end story of that that young lady which traditionally would never happen coming out environment she just got married um they have her and her husband have their own place and they have a good life and they're given back to their community so um i i like mother Teresa says in this world if you can't help all and we get overwhelmed just help one just help one and again you know in these incredible country that we live in. I think we're so blessed. We get beat up all the time by first world problems. But man, if you just take a take a deep breath and say, you know what, no matter whatever happens in my life, unfortunately, I'm going to be in a good place. Maybe my sales, I, I was down 33% last year, but I still had a good life. Sometimes I have to slap myself up the head and remember that. But yeah, helping kids and giving them hope and opportunity is the most incredible thing. And I, I'll say this, Christine, I probably get more from helping those kids than I give to those kids. Yep. And, you know, and I want to also, this is meaningful to me, is that whatever money is made, it 100% goes to the cause. You know, mm -hmm. some charities have like a lot of like, oh, administrative. No, Nick is like 100% in and it goes to the cause, which I think is extremely important. So yep. he's, he's all heart when it comes to that. Again, you see it in his actions and in his business. It's weaved throughout his life. So I want to really, you know, highlight that and I admire you for that. So thank you so much for sharing that and being on the show today and sharing all your awesome jewels and blunders and everything the good bad the ugly it's been a joy hey we'll chat later and uh thanks so much for sharing and guys if you have any questions go to seasonmarket.com slash talk we're more than happy to help you and have a great conversation about your business thanks so much have a great day thank you my good bye. friend bye yeah.